Welcome to this video from In 28 Minute. Thanks for all your love which helped us to grow to 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and more than 46,000 students on Udemy. You can find more about us on our website www.in28minutes.com. This video is a part of series of 100 plus videos celebrating my 15 years of experience with programming, design and architecture. In these videos, we talk about how to become a good programmer and a good architect. We also talk about Java related frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies other than the varied range of tools that we make use of. You can find more details in the description of the video. In this video, let's look at one of the most popular build tools, Maven. Before Maven, the most popular build tool was Ant. And I remember working on Ant scripts, which were running into thousands and thousands of lines. And those were complex because it's almost like writing source code. And Maven came in and it brought a proper organization to how we build projects. Maven came in came in with this concept of convention over configuration where it defined a default layout for the project and it became very popular. It's almost a decade since Maven first came in and today it's as popular as it was back then. Let's look at some of the important Maven tips. The first tip regarding Maven is the Maven archetype. Maven archetype is used to generate sample projects. Let's quickly generate one. So the way you do that is MVN archetype and say generate so mvn archetype colon generate so archetype is a plugin maven plugin so i'm saying mvn archetype and generate is a goal for the plugin so it's mvn archetype colon generate and maven would give you a list of options of what kind of projects to generate so archetypes are really a good way to play with projects. I mean, if you really want to quickly generate a Spring MVC project and see, uh, uh, like check what's happening, or if you want to quickly generate a Spring Brute project or something of that kind, archetypes really uh, help you a lot. So uh, let's uh, quickly generate an archetype. So I'll like, as you can see here, there are about 1746 archetypes which are present. I mean, if we scroll up, you can see there are a huge range of archetypes, including Spring Boot, a lot of stuff um, which I present in here. So the uh, archetype which I'm going to use is the default one. I'll leave it at that. So I'll say 906, that's the default. So whenever archetype shows a value here, so that becomes a default. So if you press enter, it takes 906. Uh, that's kind of the default uh, archetype. Uh, and then it's asking which version of the archetype I want to use. Let's use the latest one. I'll go with six. I mean, I would, if I just press enter, that's exactly what would have happened. Uh, it asks for the group ID and artifact ID for your artifact. So I would say in 28 minutes is the group ID, artifact ID is test snapshot, test project. Um, I'll leave it at snapshot. Uh, package I'll use com dot in 28 minutes and yeah uh, group ID artifact ID version package it looks good so I just say yes and it generated the project for me so now uh, it would have created uh, the project in the you can see that it's created in the specific directory in 28 minutes get test project so I'll CD into that test project okay I'll see I'll take a quick look at the files which are being created. So you can see that it's created a file. So, I mean, it's created a project. Uh, there's a pom.xml, which is the project object model. That's the most famous file in Maven, I guess. And then you have the proper directory structure, which Maven recommends. Source main Java contains your Java code, I mean, your source code, and your test, uh, source test Java contains your uh, test code. So uh, the sample project which we created, created a pom.xml, there's an app.java in the package com in 28 minutes, and same way app test.java in the project com in 28 minutes. Now I can actually run, uh, check, uh, if I want to run the test, I just say mvn test, and it would run the test. So app test.java would be built and run. The great thing about Maven is the fact that it already built us something called a Maven lifecycle. So whenever I said MVN test, 
There's a sequence of steps it does. It compiles the code, um, it may, then compiles the tests, and then runs them. So there is something called a Maven lifecycle, which is defined. I mean, we have a complete course on Maven out there. You'll find a link in the description. It would take you actually through uh, the entire uh, lifecycle of Maven, and it would give you a lot of information about Maven. Okay, that's my sales pitch, I guess. Um, yeah, let's get into uh, the next tip. So we looked at Maven archetypes. We, see, we saw how easy it is to generate projects and Maven makes it uh, easy to build projects, test them and all that kind of stuff. The next thing that we would look at is dependency sources. So if I want to download the sources for all the files, uh, Maven makes it really easy. So you know that there are a lot of frameworks and most of these are open source and when i'm working when i'm using a framework sometimes i want to debug through the code and then i would need the source code of that specific framework then i can do a mvn dependency sources and then the whole thing gets downloaded down for me so let's quickly look at i'll move out of the project so let's do a ls to see what projects i have let's pick one of these projects um Probably let's go with Spring MVC step by step. Okay, so I mean this is a huge project. So let's try and download the source over here. So it's MVN dependency. So what this does is actually it will scan through the dependencies and identify the projects for which there are no sources and it would download the sources for them. And once you open them up in the IDE, you can see that it's downloading the sources for Spring Core. It will also download the sources for all the other projects which are present. And when you open it up in the IDE and search for that specific class from the framework, it would open up the source code directly. The next command we want to look at is dependency tree. So it's, it's a very simple command, mvn dependency tree. It shows the different dependencies that you have and how you got them. So the thing is, with Maven, you know that there is this uh, concept called dependency hierarchy. So I am, let's say, I'm using Hibernate Validator and the Hibernate Validator depends on Validation API. So when I add a dependency on Hibernate Validator, I would get Validation API. And also here you can see that there is a dependency on JBoss Logging, which is dependent on Classmate. So you can see that when I add a dependency on just this one, I actually get all these dependencies in my build path. So this is because the POM for Hibernate Validator would include Validation API and JBoss Logging. And JBoss Logging POM would include Classmate.jar. This is called uh, a dependency tree. So the command we use is MVN dependency tree. And you can see, like once I run that, I can see all the dependencies. So since I use Spring MVC, I got Spring AOP, Beans, Context, and Core, uh, Spring Expression, Spring Security Jar. So I can see, like let's say, I'm, I don't know how a specific jar came in. Let's say I'm not sure how the commons logging came in. So now I know that I got commons logging because I'm using uh, Spring Web MVC, which is dependent on Spring Core, and Spring Core is dependent on commons logging. So this is basically uh, like a, a cool command to uh, see the entire tree, how I got the entire dependencies, MVN dependency tree. Uh, MVN Eclipse, Eclipse is a good way to generate your Eclipse workspace. So if you do MVN Eclipse Eclipse on any new project, so for example, we created the project test. So uh, let's go there, CD, what did we call it? Test project, yep, that's it. So now I say MVN Eclipse Eclipse, this would create the entire settings that Eclipse needs to, get, to uh, like create a workspace. So now like this becomes uh, a Eclipse project, actually not a workspace, this would create a project so Eclipse project, so MVN Eclipse Eclipse, you'd see that it would have created a few files. So let's do, you can see that the class path, dot class path, dot project, which are Eclipse project files, those are created. And now I can go into Eclipse and say file import and give that directory, and then it would import it as a Eclipse project. The other way I can import Maven projects through Eclipse is just open up Eclipse, create a workspace and say file import uh, Maven project. So these are two alternatives either do mvn eclipse eclipse and then import that project as a java project or you can actually directly import it as a maven project both of the options are really good options the other command uh, mvn jt colon run mvn tomcat colon run so this is this again uses uh, plugins so 
I have a project like let's go back to the previous project so let's go back to the spring MVC step-by-step -step project and I would want to run the uh, project so I would just say MVN Tomcat 7 colon run so I have actually Tomcat plugin included in the pawn.xml in this particular project and I say MVN Tomcat 7 colon run so you can see that the application has started up and when I say localhost 8080 I'm getting my uh, login page that's cool so MVN Tomcat 7 colon run is a cool way to run your uh, applications so um, it is uh, like you don't need to really uh, download a Tomcat install it and all that kind of stuff what it does is it actually like once I add in a Tomcat 7 plugin into my pawn.xml the plugin would download the Tomcat for me it would take the application install it in the Tomcat and it would run it there so it's very simple command but it does a lot of things in the background MV and Tomcat 7 run I would really recommend you to give it a try so the same command which we use Tomcat 7 colon run can be used with Jetty and other uh, lightweight servers as well so uh, the next command which we are looking at is help effective settings settings so you know that uh, when I install Maven uh, there's a a specific folder where I configure all the settings and there's also a hierarchy to it so if I want to know what are the settings which are effective as of now so I just need to say help colon effective hyphen settings and Maven would give me all the settings that I use so you can see that this is the effective settings right now so I have a local repository in a specific folder you can see that in here that's my uh, like local repository folder and oops not a lot of settings really so it's basic but if you are having any problems with Maven this is a useful command to use to find out what are the settings you have where is your local repository and things like that the next command I would want to uh, illustrate is mvn help effective pom when I try an mvn help colon effective pom what does it show it brings up a big pom.xml just like your classes like in Java all your classes have a hierarchy right so similarly all the poms also have a hierarchy so the product or project object model even though you don't have a parent i mean in your pawn.xml you can specify that this is a parent for me even if you don't have a parent maven provides a default parent which contains all the default configurations when i do a mvn help effective pom what it does is it shows the entire uh, xml of the pom including the parents so it will kind of uh, resolve everything, um, the entire hierarchy and show the complete POM. So you can see like these are basically the things which I had in the POM. So those are as it is. But there are things down here like the source directory, the scripts source directory, test source directory. These are all the things which are coming from the default parent POM. So you can see that the source directory is configured in the default parent POM. That's why we get the convention over configuration. And if I really want to override it, I can include this in my uh, POM and I can override it. So you can see the source directory, resources, and there are a lot of default plugins which come in. You can see that the Maven pl compiler plugin with a specific version, and also there are Tomcat resources plugin, var compiler. So there are a lot of stuff that you get uh, for free with Maven, and all that comes in for free because we have a hierarchy for the POMs, and most of the default stuff comes from your parent POM. And you can all like almost everything in Maven you can override, but there is a default. I mean that's the convention over configuration stuff. So the default comes from the parent POM. And if you want to find out what is the default, all that you need to do is type in MVN help effective POM. The last two things we are going to talk about are profiles and Maven plugins. So until now we actually took a look at Maven archetypes. We looked at how to. Uh, Gen generate the sources for frameworks or not generate download the sources for frameworks uh, we looked at how to check the dependency tree identify how you were getting a specific dependency in your build path we saw how to generate eclipse workspaces we saw how to run web applications in tomcat without really installing tomcat in your local machine and then we moved into effective settings to see what is the configuration for your maven local repository uh, nexus stuff and all that kind of stuff and then we looked at effective POM, which gives me the entire hierarchy, resolved hierarchy of the POM. So it sh shows me one POM.xml with all this stuff, in, uh, like including the parent POM stuff. 
Uh, now, uh, the last two things we are going to talk about are profiles and Maven plugins. Profiles are a good thing. I mean, um, sometimes uh, you would want to uh, execute a specific Maven plugin or a specific Maven step uh, in specific scenarios. In those kind of situations, you can go for profiles. So you, for example, you can have an integration test profile where when the profile is enabled, you can actually run all the integration tests as well. So by default, if you if you do MVN install, it will not run the integration test. But if you say MVN install hyphen P, the profile integration test, then it would run the integration test. Or you would have a different profile uh, for a test environment, for a deploying to test environment versus your uh, local environment. So, uh, uh, profiles a, a gives you a lot of flexibility in how you can do stuff. I mean, if you have to do different stuff in different environments or you want to execute different steps in different uh, places, you want to execute different things in different builds, all those kind of things can be achieved by using profiles. Um, it's Profiles gives you flexibility, but again, uh, uh, all, uh, po uh, like all power comes with a lot of responsibility. Be, the last one is Maven plugins. Actually, most of the things that we looked at until now are plugins. So dependency, colon sources, dependency is a plugin. Eclipse, colon, Eclipse, Eclipse is a plugin. Jetty, colon, run, Jetty is a plugin. Help uh, is a plugin. So all the things that we have seen in this specific video are all using Maven plugins. Uh, one of the cool thing about Maven is the fact that it's extensible through its plugins. And there are a wide variety of plugins that are coming in. And for most of the things that you would want to do in a Java project, there are plugins available down there. So there you go. So these are all the tips I wanted to talk to you about uh, in this specific video. Um, there is, a, I mean, if this video interests you and if you really want to learn Maven very well, there's a very good popular course on Maven that we have. You'd find a link to it in the description. Uh, other than this, as you saw, I mean, we have a wide variety of courses that we offer at in 28 minutes. So all the links to that are in the description of this specific video. Um, have a good day and until next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching this video. We created this video to celebrate my 15 years of experience with design, architecture and programming. We have created two complete Git repositories for you, Java Technology for Beginners and Java Best Practices. Java Best Practices covers my 15 years of experience with design patterns, code quality, design, architecture, and modern development practices. We talk about REST services, SOAP web services, microservices, cloud native applications, four principles of simple design, among a varied range of other topics. Tells you how to become a good programmer, designer, or an architect. Java Technology for Beginners focuses on the frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies and tools related to application development. You can find link to the repositories in the description of the video. In 28 minutes has some of the highest rated courses on varied range of topics. You can find more information on our website www.in28minutes.com.